Hey, do you have a minute? Let's talk about the climate. Welcome to Klima Minute where we give you beat-by-beat -beat updates of what's up and what's happening here at COP26 in Glasgow, Scotland. My name is Val Vestil, your host for Klima Minute. This afternoon, we are here in George Square here in Glasgow, Scotland. We are at the heart of the youth climate strikes. Over 25,000 people are gathering here at the square for the strikes. People have signs everywhere and we have our own representation here in the Philippines. Environment researcher John Leo Algo, who is one of the Filipino strikers here, says that no other sector is more at stake in the fight against the climate crisis but the youth. The climate crisis is the gravest existential threat to current and future generations. And the Philippines is one of the most vulnerable countries to the climate crisis. Even with the COVID pandemic affecting the world, our greenhouse gas emissions continue to rise and so does global warming and losses and damages. So I'm here representing the Philippine civil society and the youth sector to bring the voices of vulnerable communities and call for urgent, just, effective and inclusive actions against the climate crisis. Despite 25,000 people gathering here supporting climate action, we still have a few climate change deniers who are campaigning and saying that uh, climate alarmism is fake science. However, we have representatives from the Philippines who have lived experiences in terms of climate change effects and they are represented by Sir Rodney Galicia and uh, Father Angel behind me giving us facts, giving us live realities and telling us that climate change is real, it's happening and it's negatively impacting the most vulnerable countries, including and especially the Philippines. This the is not alarmism. This is reality. We suffer. Our islands are sinking and we suffer year by year. Don't be apathetic. We are dying. Even if this is the fifth time that Action Klima lead convener Rodney Galicia is joining COP, he still says seeing climate change deniers is a struggle that he wants to actively denounce. What's real really is that for the last 10 years the Philippines has been experiencing a lot of losses and damages when it comes to uh, the impacts of the climate crisis, uh, specifically like Typhoon Haiyan and even you know, uh, the intensities of our typhoons are getting higher and higher. And it's so sad. It's being apathetic, you know, being indifferent, and that perhaps they were unable to experience all these kinds of maladies. But for us, vulnerable countries, uh, it's so sad that the, they, they are unable to, you know, to believe in that. The next day, the youth climate strikes was succeeded by the Global Day of Action for Climate Justice, a global and decentralized mass mobilization where organizers say more than 100,000 gathered here in Glasgow to march. John Bonifacio, a young activist who decided to drop out of med school to work full-time on his climate advocacy, says that leaders need to listen to communities who are most impacted by climate change. In the last analysis, the young people of the world are really what the people who are going to be most impacted because the climate crisis is just going to keep getting worse and worse, especially if there's no action on the part of world leaders. So it's important that, youth, that, that the youth really see their role in clamoring for change because it's really the earth and our lives at stake. It's our future but of course right now young people around the world are also some of the most impacted when it comes to climate crisis so it's really up to us to really band together and call for action the climate strikes are going on outside as world leaders are inside the cop 26 venue continuing their ministerial meetings and negotiations many accredited ngos have critiqued these negotiations as being very exclusive and many others express the feeling of being left out in the important negotiation talks Actually, right, like just a few miles away are the, is the actual conference of Party 26. And we're here right now in the strikes instead of there because we have been excluded. Like even if we go there in the blue zone, we're still not allowed to go into the negotiations. We're not, the Global South or people from the most affected people, places and areas are not even participating in the negotiations because we're being left out. To be honest, when I first came here, uh, the first people I saw that are rallying are grade school kids. And it really inspires a lot of people here, including myself, to further give our best voices, our best calls, and 
scream as loud as ever to our world leaders who are just across the city meeting supposedly to bring solutions that we have desperately needed for decades now. Grassroots campaign organizer Christ, who is currently based in the UK, feels the same way and is out striking today in the hopes that their demands would be listened to by the decision makers at COP26. We hope that the people in the uh, conference of parties would uh, listen to the genuine calls of the people outside here in Glasgow protesting in the Global Day of Action is to end climate justice, to, to pay reparations to the Global South, to end the climate imperialism that has long been exploiting and oppressing the people in the Global South. Our government leaders should listen to the youth because the youth has creative, innovative, outside-the-box solutions and ways of thinking. And when you, have, when you are dealing with something like the climate crisis, which is complex and has multiple impacts that are interrelated with one another, you need to have all perspectives accounted for. This place is packed. We are in the middle of the climate strikes right now and people have signboards all over. I have a signboard myself. It says here, we are looking for a hot lover, not a hot planet. Climate justice and justice for love as well. My name is Val Vestil, your host for Klima Minute. See you tomorrow.